Africa, 2008. One thing is for sure, it's a world away from Seattle. First, we need to get to London. We go a day early to assure that our luggage is there when we need it. Our trip is long, tiring, and uncomfortable, but uneventful. Our hotel, the Four Seasons, looks out on Hyde Park. It's time to stretch our legs and get some fresh air. A walk in the park around the Serpentine is just what we need. This little duck is an aptly named tufted duck. The late afternoon light is just right on the Prince Albert Memorial for pictures. The Victorian architecture is interesting but a little gaudy for my taste. But Sherry likes the gargoyles. We walk through Kensington Gardens, stop by Paxton's Head, an old pub on Knightsbridge, for dinner, and then we call it a day. In the morning, we head for Buckingham Palace. The Queen's flag is flying, so we know she's in. We think about dropping by, but she's probably busy. Matters of state and all. Instead, we walk to Westminster to see Big Ben and Parliament and to catch a boat to Greenwich. We have some second thoughts when the boat fills up with French school kids on a class trip. But we persevere and enjoy the ride. The London Eye is new since we were in London last. You get a different view of London from the riverside. This is the Queen Mary, a pub. And here's the reconstruction of Shakespeare's Globe Theater, the only thatched roof in London. The weather vane is appropriate for the Billingsgate Fish Market. We head under the Tower Bridge, which has become a symbol of London. The boat makes a stop at the Tower of London, and all the French kids get off. Another new building for us is the London City Hall, the round building on the left. We round a bend in the river and see the old Royal Naval College at Greenwich. The buildings were designed by Christopher Wren as a sailor's hospital. The buildings were completed in 1694. They served as the Royal Naval College from 1873 to 1998. The National Maritime Museum has a unique collection of artifacts from the time Britannia ruled the waves. From the Royal Observatory, you get perspective on this place. The modern high-rise buildings now stand where dockyards built the Royal Navy's ships and wharves moved the commerce with the colonies. The Royal Observatory was established in 1675 for the purpose of improving navigation. The museum collection describes how this place became the center of space and time, with Greenwich Mean Time and the Prime Meridian. Every day starts right here at zero longitude and zero hours GMT. Time to head back to London. It's been an interesting day. Back on our boat to retrace our route from the morning. Under the Tower Bridge again, there's the HMS Belfast, a World War II cruiser, now a museum. Back at the hotel, we meet the rest of the expedition for cocktails and dinner. In the morning, we head for Luton, north of London, to board our plane. Ordinarily a straightforward trip, but the M1 was clogged, and we got a scenic tour of the English countryside. But we made it and we knew all along that the airplane would not leave without us or our luggage. Now the adventure can begin.